ghost guns. I mean, it sounds so scary, doesn't it? A ghost gun's going to come and get you and scare you. It's just silly stuff. Barry Laws, president of Open Range in Crestwood, says the privately manufactured guns aren't as frightening as they sound. But what are they? So all these pieces are not the gun. They are parts of the gun. Law says essentially it's a receiver and the buyer is responsible to buy the parts that make up the gun. Also, buyers have to drill the holes that make the gun work. Voila, you've got a gun. He says requiring ghost guns to display serial numbers wouldn't really help in solving gun crime. Since there's no serial number on a ghost gun, they're saying that they can't do that initial trace step, which is true. <clears throat> but does it really help solve crimes and I'm not really sold on that. ATF special agent in charge, Sean Morrow, says it's true that tracing isn't always successful. Oftentimes it is successful and it's just one piece of the puzzle. Morrow says last year about 50 ghost guns were confiscated in Kentucky. Of those, most were from Lexington and Louisville. In Louisville, he says he's noticed semi-automatic converters, which can allow people to fire multiple rounds at once. And when they fall into the hands of individuals who are not supposed to have them, gang members, armed drug dis uh, distributors, or people who are intent on harming others, uh, they can uh, cause a lot of destruction. Steele, law says there are better ways to deal with rising gun violence. It's not going to stop people that want to do crime, want to do crime. It's not going to stop anybody to say, oh, you, you know, you can't buy a ghost gun anymore, because guess what? Somebody's going to start doing it in their basement.